Hello, everyone. Today we have Nikki Harmon in the studio. Um, she is a parent here in, in uh, the Philadelphia area, and she's going to be talking to us about her experiences um, with her kids during the pandemic. So hi, Nikki. It's great to have you. Hi, Bettina. It's good to be here. Thanks for having me. Um, I was wondering if you could start by um, introducing yourself, telling our viewers a little bit about you know who you are, what you do, and where, where you're coming from. Okay, sure. Um, well, I'm Nikki Harmon. I grew up here in Philadelphia, went to all Philly public schools. Um, and now I am the mother of three children, uh, two who will be starting seventh grade and one who will be starting 10th grade. I am a community media professional and that I've been a program manager and an educator and a production mentor. And I also um, have taught video production, and um, and also a novelist on the side. <laughs> so I do a bunch of things. That's wonderful. So you have a very, you um, have a very creative background in, in media specifically. So that's interesting to our viewers and our members. I wouldn't be surprised if somebody reached out to you. <laughs> <laughs> um, so how many school-age children do you have? I have three children. Okay. Yep. Um, and are they, they're going back to school in person, virtually, a combination of both? It's going to be all virtual. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, and what kind of support have you received specifically from the school district in order to, to prepare your kids and, and yourself, your family life around doing all virtual schooling? Well, um, we go, are in the Sheltonham School District. And um, it has been pretty good. I mean, in terms of communication, uh, you know, obviously all parents really wanted their kids to go back to school um, just because it's really hard to do schooling at home. And of course you really want their kids to have like good school experiences where they have extracurriculars and there you have friends and lunch period and gym and um, you know, all the things that you can't really get online. So, um, the district kept in touch with us all summer long. They had parent committees and um, and sent out parent surveys and sent weekly updates on what their decision-making process was. So in terms of feeling like very connected, I did. Um, of course, the ultimate decision was disappointing, but it probably is the only decision to make um, was to have them go back virtually. Yeah. I'm wondering, um, do you feel that your your role in your kids' education has changed in the sense that you're doing a certain degree of homeschooling or sort of like even like classroom management, like with, within your own home with oh, yeah. during that stretch of time? Oh, definitely. So, um, so when we went into quarantine in March, you know, at first we all thought it was temporary. So there was no like, you know, so it was kind of like the kids were on a two-week spring vacation, you know, and then uh, work started rolling in and they had like optional things and stuff. Um, and then eventually they got into it. And of course this year it looks like it's definitely more structured and ready to go. But like, you know, I, I don't have a huge house. I have a, a decent sized house, but I have three kids and two adults who are working from home. So, and we don't have a home office which has been the pain of my business this whole, you know, last five months. I had dreamed about the home office because um, just having a space where you can shut the door and do your Zoom or do your work <clears throat> would be cool. But as it was, the girls sat at the dining room table uh, with their work, with headphones, so that each could kind of concentrate on their own work. Um, my son, who's a high schooler, ended up doing most of his work in his bedroom. Um, not at the desk that he has, but on his bed, whatever. And, um, um, but you know, and it's been, it's, it's been more than challenging because, you know, some teachers gave more work, some gave less. One of my kids is better at like schoolwork and she enjoys schoolwork and she can self-motivate and self-manage one cannot so it's like a constant you have to sit next to her to make sure that she's not doing stuff on her other tabs and you know it, it was challenging uh even at their age you know they were 11 at the end of the school year and 
Uh, and you know, bored and tired and then Mr. Friends. And I mean, it, it was not easy. Um, everybody had a couple bad days. I had to like really give smack about and say like, okay, you don't have to do it today if you're really having a bad day. Um, sometimes we would have bad days. I spent one day in bed. <laughs> I just had it. And um, um, I just watched TV all day. <laughs> but I mean, like, you just try to cope, you know? And then too, trying to do stuff that's good for you. But then after a while, even those walks are boring, you know? So this is definitely, I mean... Is it, it, it's it's a new experience. A lot of people are going through it, right? Um, and it sounds like it's it's it must be interfering with the way that you do your own work as well, right? Like suddenly you have all of these new responsibilities, right? So in the morning you check and see who has Zoom meetings and what time the Zoom meetings are, and then you have to remind the kids because they never look at a clock to like, are you in your Zoom meeting? Are you ready? Did you brush your hair? Do you have on a shirt Not for my son? He, you know. <clears throat> and like, um, and just trying to make sure that they're there and staying on top of them, even though this is where everything's optional, they don't have to do all that stuff. I made them do everything, if for nothing else, just to break up the monotony of being at home with us all day. Um, so yeah, keeping track of their online meetings and uh, activities and deadlines, and then keeping track of my. Zoom meetings and trying to find a quiet place to do it. And then my partner trying to keep track of her Zoom meetings and trying to find a place where we could all, you know, just have some privacy. It was Yeah, definitely. I mean it's it's very um it's very distracting, I'm sure, to to have everybody in that same space. And I also think, I mean, I, I know that it has um a psychological impact, right? I mean, you're talking about how your kids miss their friends and so much about going to school. Like, I mean, going to school is a complex thing, right? It's not just about um, learning. It's also, or like learning about the subject matter that you're studying, but it's also about like learning how to socialize, you know? Yeah. Um, I'm mostly concerned about that for my daughters because they uh, were going to seventh grade and I was really, and they're going to a new school and I was really, and at this new school uh, at Cedarbrook, there's a lot more extracurriculars and a lot more stuff and sports and stuff that they could do. I really hope that they, um, they're twins. So I was really hoping they could um, develop their own interests and their own friend set and their own <laughs> schedules. And it was much closer to us than the other school. So it was easy to get them back and forth if we need to. Um, I was really looking forward to like this being a good year for them to really, um, you know, become their individual selves and, and and blossom a little bit. And I'm very disappointed for them, particularly, that they're not going to have that um, this year because it's such an awkward time anyway, you know, that you only really meet people through those clubs and extracurricular stuff. You know, that's where you really meet friends. And they were going to, you know, um, travel from room to room for every subject. So it's a whole new experience. I was really looking forward to them. Um, moving into and growing up, um, maturing into, but, you know, hopefully look at it maybe in January. <laughs> Are they not able to do any sports? Like there are no outdoor sports, no extracurricular activities like that? No, the district shut down sports. Um, the township is continuing on with travel soccer. Uh, so my, one of my daughters does travel soccer. So she's actually been to two practices, um, which have been good for her. I mean, she just really needs to see other girls her age. Plus, they're all out of shape. They used to be like, they're, I mean, they're not getting heavy, but they're like, you know, they can't walk up the block without huffing and puffing because they've just been sitting around for months. So she told me she almost had a heart attack the other day. They had to run, you know, back and forth. And she was like, I, <laughs> I couldn't do it. So, I mean, that's part of the you know, reason you want your kids active because, you know, otherwise they lose it. Bad enough, I'm losing it. I don't want them to, <laughs> to lose it too. So um, we'll see how travel soccer goes. If, if nothing else, um, even just practices is good. My sons uh, had a basketball league uh, that he used to play for. And I, 
and he swam, but I don't think swimming will be coming back. And I think the basketball league got canceled, but he has um, practices he can go to. And so he runs drills uh, with his coach just to like keep in shape. Which is, I mean, he's, he plays three sports. He used to be an athlete, but now this is a YouTube athlete. <laughs> all he does is watch dank memes all day. <laughs> Yeah, 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 it's a big change, yeah. and I guess, um, yeah, it's a big change for everybody. So, you know, my my final sort of question or thing that I wanted to talk to, talk to you about or hear from you was, so this is an experience that a lot of parents are going through, that a lot of families are going through. Um, mm -hmm. And what I don't know if advice is the right word. Like, if you have advice, or if you have thoughts, or um, like what. If, if you had any sort of parting words for people that are in the same situation that you're in, you know, in terms of like how to, how to manage, how to assess this, this moment. Um, and it doesn't, you know, it can even be a series of questions. <laughs> but if, you know, how is it that you're, that you're thinking about these things or coping? Or I, I will say one thing that worked for us. So when this whole thing started, I, st I had what I call the apocalypse schedule. Cause I try to make light of it, you know, a little bit. So I made a schedule and like, actually we did have an exercise hour. So at 12 o'clock, everyone would stop what they're doing and everybody would do some kind of exercise. And of course it was a lot of pushback, but I, you know, I try to keep to it. And uh, just so we, you know, you know, just so we get so bad. Um, and you know, that is easy. You can find stuff on YouTube. My son has some weights, and because he, he used to swim, so he was used to like um, stuff. And um, I mean, eventually we kind of let it slide, especially after the school year ended. But I'll tell you, like they would look for those hours. Like when I said it's exercise hour, and if I was on a meeting or doing a little something, they would be like, "No, I'm tired. What you're doing is exercise hour," you know. So I do feel like if you can maintain some kind of schedule. Um, of something that they enjoy, or, or even if they don't enjoy, if, if kids need structure, and if um, your school isn't providing it, or a lot of schools are doing um, where like you you don't have stuff to do every day, you have it to Thursday, Friday, whatever. Like if you make your own schedule that everybody knows, everybody agrees to, everybody can see on a wall somewhere. I think it'll keep everyone a little more sane. Um, dinner, the meals at a specific time, maybe an hour where it's video game time or whatever that people can work towards. I think um, I think kind of the loose loosiness of quarantine just makes things feel a little less real, and you know you just feel like it's vague, and you're just kind of waiting for it to be over. But we're going to be in it for another four months at least I think. <clears throat> so you might as well try to really make your best use of the time. Um, but I don't have any <laughs> advice, <laughs> but not to be so hard on yourself. If you have a bad day, let the kids have a bad day. You know, sometimes they just need to be heard. I remember, I remember again, my son was like, I'm tired of looking at your faces. <laughs> I was like, I'm sorry. <laughs> But I told him, so he's like, I want to look at kids my own age. And I was like, yeah, <laughs> I couldn't argue with it. And yeah. I felt bad for him because he was really enjoying high school. He didn't enjoy middle school. He had a hard time in middle school. But high school seemed to be like where he was finding his groove. And I was really sorry that he um, got pulled out of it um, so abruptly. But, you know, what you going to do is a pandemic. Yeah. I mean, all that sounds like really good advice. I like the apocalypse calendar. <laughs> and I, I do really appreciate um, the idea that if you, that, um, you know, we should let each other have bad days. Mm -hmm. you know, that, that forcing, forcing things is not, is not really helping anybody. Um, and I think, yeah, I think we can all appreciate that. All right, Nikki, thank you so much for joining us in the studio. And oh. yeah, it was wonderful to have you. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it, Bettina.